Hey guys, today we are going to be looking at factoring a difference of two squares. We're gonna answer the question, what is the difference of two squares and how do I factor a difference of two squares? So first let's multiply these binomials and see if we notice any patterns. So this is the product of a sum and difference. We have a sum here, a difference here. We have the same first term and last term in each of the groups. So let's use FOIL to see if we notice any patterns. So first times the first is x squared, outer times outer is 3x, inner times inner is negative 3x, and then negative 3 times positive 3 is negative 9. And then when I combine like terms, the like terms simplify out. Those are a zero pair. So I'm left with x squared minus 9. So I ended up with the x terms canceling out and I just have the first term squared minus the second term in each of the groups squared because 3 squared is 9. Let's see if the same thing happens here. Let's use FOIL to multiply and see what we end up with. So the first times the first would be 4x squared. Outer times outer would be positive 8x. Inner times inner would be negative 8x, and last times last would be negative 16. And the same thing happens, the middle terms simplify out, and I'm left with 4x squared minus 16. So what patterns do we notice? Well, our answer ended up being the first term squared minus the second term squared. So remember, factoring is going from a polynomial to its factors. So today we are going to be given this difference of two perfect squares and we will go back to its factors using this pattern right here. So here are the steps to do that. First thing you need to do is make sure you check for a GCF. Make sure that it is actually a difference of two squares, so there needs to be subtraction, and then both of the terms need to be perfect squares, meaning they can be square rooted. And then we will use this rule to factor. We will take the square root of the first term, the square root of the second term, for our two binomials, and then just make one a plus and one a minus. And I'm going to be referring to this method as dots, that stands for difference of two squares. Okay, so first thing we wanna check for whenever we are factoring what we think is difference of two squares or dots, is it actually a difference of two squares? Well, I can take the square root of x squared, that would be x, and I can take the square root of four, that would be two, and it is a difference, so we are good there. So then I set up my two binomials. I make one group of plus, one group of minus, so x plus 2 times x minus 2. And then if we foiled it out, I should get the same thing. Okay, so let's check if this is a difference of two perfect squares. I see a difference, and the square root of 81 is 9, and the square root of x squared is x. So it looks like it's a difference of two squares, so now I can factor it into the square roots with one binomial being a plus and one being a minus. So it'd be nine plus x times nine minus x. Okay, next one I need to make sure that this is a difference of two squares. I see subtraction, so that's good. Now let's take the square root of 49a squared, that would be 7a. And then the square root of one is one. So it looks like we have a difference of two squares. So now I can factor it into my two binomials. It would be seven a plus one times seven a minus one. Okay, number four, I need to check and see if this is a difference of two squares. It is not since I have the plus. So this is a prime. If we have a sum of two squares, that is not factorable. So it is prime, cannot be factored. All right, let's check number five. I see subtraction, so that's good. Now let's see if I can take the square root of both terms. The square root of 4h squared would be 2h, and the square root of 25g squared 
would be 5g. So it looks like it is a difference of two squares. So now I'm gonna make my binomials with the square roots and just make one group of plus and one of minus. So it'll be 2h plus 5g and 2h minus 5g. All right, number six looks like I'm gonna have a GCF if I'm looking at eight and 32, those both have a common factor of eight. So let me factor out the eight. And then I'm left with x squared, y squared, minus four z to the fourth. Okay, now I'm going to make sure that this is a difference of two squares. So I have the difference and then these look like perfect squares. Let me take the square root of them. The square root of x squared y squared is just x y. And then the square root of 4z to the fourth would be 2z squared. We just half exponents to take the square root of them because remember square root is the same thing as one half exponent. So my final answer here would be eight. You wanna include the GCF in your final answer. And then xy plus 2z squared times xy minus 2z squared. Okay, let's look at number seven. So I see a subtraction sign, so it's difference. And then let's take the square root of x to the eighth. That would be x to the fourth. And then the square root of 81 is nine. So now I can factor this with the difference of two squares pattern. It would be x to the fourth plus nine times x to the fourth minus nine. Okay, now you might think that we are done, but if you look closely, this is another difference of two perfect squares because I can take the square root of x to the fourth. It is x squared, and nine is a perfect square. I can take the square root of it. It is three. So I can factor this problem further. x to the fourth plus nine, that factor is not gonna change because that's prime, but x to the fourth minus nine can factor with difference of two squares again into x squared plus three times x squared minus three. Okay, number eight looks like I'm gonna have a greatest common factor of five here. And then I'm left with 16y to the fourth minus Five divided by, or 125 divided by five is 25, and then n squared. So now I'm going to factor this using the difference of two squares pattern. It is a difference. And then the square root of 16y to the fourth is four y squared. And then the square root of 25 n squared is five n. So the final answer will be five times 4y squared plus 5n times 4y squared minus 5n. All right, number nine, I have a GCF here of five, and then I'm left with x to the fourth minus 80 divided by five is 16. So now I'm gonna factor this using difference of two squares. The square root of x to the fourth is x squared, and then the square root of 16 is four. So I get five times x squared plus four times x squared minus four. And I can still factor this further because I have another difference of two squares with that x squared minus four. It's a difference and then the square root of x squared is x and the square root of four is four, or the square root of four is two. So this fully factored form will be five times x squared plus four and then the x squared minus four will factor into x plus two times x minus two. Okay, now on number 10 through 12, I have some equations, so I'm gonna solve them using the zero product property. So let's go through those steps for the zero product property. Remember, the first step is to make sure the equation is set equal to zero. The second step is to factor. 
So it is set equal to zero. Now we need to factor it. This is a difference of two squares because I see the difference. The square root of x squared is x and the square root of 64 is eight. So this would factor into x plus eight times x minus eight. Okay, so we have factored it and then the last step with zero product property is to set each factor equal to zero. So x plus eight, I'm gonna set that equal to zero. And I get that x equals negative eight. And then x minus eight, I'll set that equal to zero. And I would add eight and get that x equals eight. So I have x equals positive or negative eight. So you can write it how we have been writing our two solutions with curly brackets, negative eight, comma, positive eight, or I'm gonna teach you this new symbol, plus or minus eight. That is another way you can write it. If you have the same number and one answer is just the positive and one is the negative, then that is how you can write it. X is positive or negative eight. So either of those will work. All right, let's look at number 11. I have an equation, so I'm gonna solve it using the zero product property. So the first step is to make sure that the equation is set equal to zero, which this one is not, so let's go ahead and do that. We're gonna subtract 49 from both sides, and we get 25x squared minus 49 equals zero. So we set it equal to zero, and then the second step is to factor. So now I am going to factor 25 X squared minus 49. That looks like a difference of two perfect squares. I have the subtraction and then the square root of 25 X squared is five X and the square root of 49 is seven. So this will factor into five X plus seven times five X minus seven. So we have set it equal to zero, we factored it, and then the last step is to set each factor equal to zero. So let's start with five X plus seven. I need to set that equal to zero. So I would subtract seven and I get five X equals negative seven and then divide by five. So X equals negative seven fifths. And then we will set the other factor equal to zero, five X minus seven. And we would add seven and get five X equals seven and then divide by five and get that X equals seven fifths. So our answer is positive or negative seven fifths. So you can write it with the curly brackets. Or if you want to use the positive or negative sign, you can do that as well. All right, last one, we have an equation. So let's use the zero product property to solve it. So first thing I need to check is, is this equation set equal to zero? No, it's not, so let's do that. So I'm gonna subtract 50 from both sides. And I get 18 X squared minus 50 equals zero. All right, so we set it equal to zero. The second step is to factor. So I'm gonna go ahead and factor this. I notice that those coefficients are both even, so that means that I have a GCF of at least two, and then I'm left with nine X squared minus 25 equals zero. So now I can factor that with the difference of two squares pattern. The square root of nine X squared is three X, and the square root of 25 is five. So this will factor into two, times three X plus five times three X minus five. 
Okay, so we have set it equal to zero, we have factored, and now we are going to set each factor equal to zero. Let's start with two, since two is a factor. So if I set two equal to zero, that is not a true statement. That is a false statement. So we're gonna throw out two. That is not gonna be a part of the solution set because there's nothing I could plug in to make that equal to zero. So now let's move on to three X plus five. I'm gonna set that equal to zero. And I would subtract five and I get three X equals negative five and then divide by three and I get x equals negative 5 thirds. Okay, then the last factor I need to set equal to zero is 3x minus five. So I would add five, and I get 3x equals five, and then we would divide by three, and we get that x equals 5 thirds. So my solutions are negative five-thirds and five-thirds. So we can write it in the curly brackets. Or we can write it as positive or negative five-thirds.